test bench has your essential test equipment. Test equipment that you can't really work without. Such as your multimeter. Another good piece of test equipment that no good test bench should have or should be without. An ESR meter. Of course, a Variac comes in very helpful and you need an isolation transformer for safety. A oscilloscope also uh, comes in handy for chasing down waveforms. But another piece of test equipment that's all often overlooked, uh, people might not even think of it as test equipment, but it actually is a very important device. And you can make one yourself. This is probably the cheapest piece of protective equipment that you can have on your test bench. And that's a current limiting device. All you need is a couple components, four components to be exact. You need a power cord. A socket. A light bulb receptacle. And a good old incandescent light bulb. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to make a current limit device. Now, I could have gone elaborate and I could have put a switch on here to bypass it, but I'm just making this simple. Uh, total cost to make this thing is less than $5, and that's including the light bulb. I think that the, the, the uh, this was the most expensive piece, believe it or not. I paid a dollar, I think I paid a dollar fifty-six for the lamp holder and about $0.85 cents for the uh, the socket. And what we're going to do is we're going to wire this socket in series with, with the light bulb. So that when we are plugging our unit under test, all of the current is going to go through the light first before it arrives at the test socket. Now ideally you would use a, a polarized cord so that your light bulb is going to be in line with the uh, the hot side and not in line with the neutral. Uh, I'm not using a polarized cord because mine's being plugged in. Anytime I'm going to do any testing it's going to be on an isolation transformer anyway so it doesn't matter. But let's wire this thing up. I'll show you how it works and how it protects you. And basically what this does is it provides a resistive load so that if your device under test has a dead short the light bulb is going to light up bright and you're not going to burn up any more parts and that's what it that's why this is a safety device uh, not so much safety for the servicer because that's what your isolation transformer is for this is to prevent damage to the item that you're working on the, the unit under test in the event of a power supply short you know capacitor short whatever that's it's going to protect your power supply from self-destructing in the in the event of a dead short so let's go about and hook this thing up the first thing I need to do is to uh, separate my my line cord, my zip cord. That should be plenty, I would think. Normally, what you would do is, on a polarized plug, one plate is wider than the other. Now this one here is not a polarized plug, but you want to use the narrower of the two. The wider blade is your neutral. So you would trace the wire from the narrower side of the plug itself. And that's the side that is going to go to your one of the terminals on your lamp. So in my case, it doesn't matter because I'm not using a polarized plug. I'm using a non-polarized plug and again it's because I'm plugged into an isolation transformer so we can just place the strip wire under one of the screw terminals okay does that fit? it does okay good good I'm just going to twist my wires here a bit Lamp holders made in Mexico, and they actually have well, it's not really a proper Robertson screw, it's a Robertson screw type square, but it's not uh, certainly not fitting my screwdriver. So, we're going to tighten that down, and then on the other side, we're going to connect the other side 
we'll connect it to the neutral side of the uh, of the plug. So I'm just going to cut my wire here. Now, if I was making this to be a, a permanent fixture, I'd put this in a box and stuff, but for my test purposes, it's not going to be left plugged in any length of time. It'll be used when I need to use it, and it'll be unplugged the rest of the time. So I'm just going to leave this open, and I'm just going to wrap it up in, uh, in electrical tape so that I don't get a shock. But if I was really creative, I would get a, I'd get a little box and mount this in a proper electrical box if I really wanted it to look nice. But it's more about functionality. It's not something that's being permanently connected. I'm not going to be running anything through this. It's just something that if I need to test something on the test bench, I can do that. So I've connected my neutral wire. In this case, I don't know which one it is because it's non-polarized, but you would normally connect the one with the larger blade to the larger slot on your plug socket, that being the neutral side, the short blade or the smaller blade is the hot side. Okay, now that I've stripped the other wire and I've got the hot side going to the, the, the middle terminal here, not to the not to the uh, the screw socket. One of the reasons I'm building this little jig is because I'm going to be doing some videos in the real near future where I'm going to create intentional shorts on power supplies. So it will be used as a protective device so that uh, the unit under test doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't burn up. And the amount of current that you can limit the device to will depend on the size of light bulb. So for example, if you put a 100 watt bulb in, you'll be able to draw approximately one amp through it because that's what it takes to, uh, at a, oh uh, well, a little, little over an amp. Uh, at 120 volts, a 100 watt light bulb will draw about 1.2 amps. So the smaller the light bulb, the sooner the light bulb is going to light up. It's going to take less current to light the light bulb. Okay, I've got the screws tightened down now. Now I'm just going to wrap this up with some electrician's tape. Just to protect me from making contact with the plug accident contact that is and we'll do the same for the terminals on the bottom okay the unit is now complete all we need to do is screw in a light bulb and when we plug this in this now becomes a resistive test set Let's get something and plug it in to show you what, how it works. So you can see I've got my TV back up on the bench here. Now there's no fault on this TV yet. I haven't created one. But we will be doing uh, another. I'm going to basically cause a short in the power supply and we can go and test it. And that's why I built this. When you plug in this, you'll see that the light will glow dimly when the set is running. And the set will actually turn on. Because this set is going to take less power than uh, the light bulb will drop. Okay, I'm going to use a 100 watt bulb in, in this one because this TV is going to draw a little bit more power than uh, than a 60 watt bulb will pass. Well, a 60 watt bulb will pass it, but uh, there's a fair bit of drop voltage drop on it. Um, okay, there we go. So I'm running the TV at uh, what's my voltage on here? Yeah. Running the TV at about 120 volts there. 
but as you can see the TV works fine we're dissipating some power through the light bulb now why is this important well if there was a dead short say on power supply what's going to happen well if you were to take a jumper and put it straight across your power supply you'd have major sparks normally but in this case all that's going to happen is the light bulb is going to light up right so you plug it in well, all of a sudden your light bulb goes really bright well you know you've got a fault right you're not going to blow anything up on the device so that's why these are considered to be a, a valuable piece of test equipment even though it's not really a test equipment a piece of safety equipment uh, no bench should be without some type of current limiting device 100 watt light bulb works really good um, the larger the bulb of course the less the voltage will, will drop and that that becomes the problem is getting 100 watt light bulbs because in North America they've banned 100 watt light bulbs for years uh, I think we're even it's harding it's easy even getting harder to get 60 watt bulbs now so what you could do is you could put two 60 watt bulbs in parallel and that would give you the same amount of current drop as a 120 watt bulb right so uh, you could do that if you can't get a 100 watt bulb but again you're not going to run you're not going to run your device through this all the time this is something that you're going to haul out when you've got a, a power supply you've got a fuse that's blown black and you don't know why that fuse is blown and you want to test something and you don't want to risk doing any further damage you set up your series light bulb with your test plug you plug your device into that that way if the thing glows really bright you know you've got a problem if it uh, lights up dim then you're, you're drawing a bit of current and then you can you can troubleshoot with this and uh, get your problem solved without risking any further damage hope you enjoyed this quick little video to show how to build a current limiting device for testing purposes we'll catch you in the next one bye for now